Welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Let's get straight into it with the biggest one. Thank you very much to AVX Corporation. You've no doubt heard of AVX. They're one of the biggest capacitor manufacturers. They actually saw my ceramic capacitor cracking video recently and they wanted to let me know, sent an email, wanted to let me know how uh, enjoyable they found it and if I wanted any stuff. Um, so, hell yes. So, thank you very much. Let's crack it crack it open and see what we have inside. It's a big ass box um, for a company that makes capacitors. So, well, among other things, you know, they're known for their passive, uh, their passive components. It is a sample kit bonanza. Oh, automotive qualified uh, multi-layer surround capacitors. Oh, oh, look at this. Passive components for energy harvesting. Wow. It, it doesn't end. Passive, compo <laughs> Passive components for the Internet of Things. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, polymer sample kit. Awesome! We we have a note. I did like tantalum mobile sample kit for mobile uh, phones and stuff specifically. It's a bonanza, it really is. Jeez, let's crack this puppy open. And so thank you very much, AVX. Um, there's nothing better to have in your lab than these types of kits. Um, some of them, you know, from the really good manufacturers, reputable ones like AVX, they can actually be quite expensive, these kits. Um, you know, you can get your one hung low cheapos on, on eBay and stuff like, oh, what, oh, don't wanna put this upside down. One hung low cheapies on eBay, and I recommend those because they're completely affordable. They're ridiculously good value, but the capacitors are of unknown quality. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. What have we got in the drawers? These are um, super caps. Wow. So we'll take a close up look at that. That's fantastic. Um, so I'll link in these down below. I'm sure you can probably buy them on DigiKey and uh, places like that. So that's a nice little, that's, that's over the top. That really is. Thank you very much, AVX. But yeah, these are great because they contain all the, you know, all the data sheets and info, the parametric curves and all sorts of stuff. And it's great to have, you know, if you're designing serious Electronics, you know, professional, um, especially if you're in, you know, the automotive or uh, the military industry or any one of the medical or one of the, those other uh, sort of, you know, regulated type industries, it's important to choose exactly the right capacitor, the exact right inductor, the exact right component that you need, and you will specify down to the 10 digit part number, it must be that specific capacitor, as I've done in the capacitor cracking video. And there's reasons for that. And of course, you're going to go to one of the top quality uh, suppliers like um, AVX and specify that particular part for that particular reason due to flex on the PCB, low microphonics, or it, o it fails open, or it's ultra reliable, whatever it is. Um, you know, it's qualified for a certain life and uh, uh, mean time bet between fire or whatever it is. Um, specifying parts is really important in professional electronics. So this is fantastic. Wow. It's a bonanza. This is going to be very useful. It's good to have these for like videos and things like that so I know if I'm putting a capacitor in a circuit demonstrating something like this, then uh, I know I have the exact parameters of the part rather than just pull on, pull out one of my eBay kits which are fine for general use, but I have no data sheet for those. I have no clue who manufactured it, where, um, and they just got it at the Shenzhen market you know, that weekend. Um, so, yeah, this is fantastic. Thank you very much, AVX. And they liked my video and they said it was spot on. Fantastic. Oh, and by the way, Ron Demko, who uh, emailed me about this, is one of their head, uh, you know, uh, component support uh, engineers at AVX, has written this excellent white paper on the issue that I showed uh, previously. It goes into all sorts of detail. Really recommended. Linked in down below. Mmm, super caps. Let's have a look. Oh, look at these. What do we got? 
whole bunch of them, uh, one ferret all the way up to, oh, the big daddy. Oh, oh, beautiful. Hmm, double A battery. You might not think that there's much energy inside one of these things, but if you took the energy out of this and transferred it into one of these with its ridiculously low ESR equivalent series resistance, you could probably world with this thing or blow shit up. Hmm, future video perhaps. There you go, they do actually have some 5 volt ones in this uh, SCC range too, uh, 5 ferrets. Nice little form factor, I like that. Reminds me of like an old school uh, HC49U crystal type uh, form factor. Hmm, nice. Great for memory backup and things like that, especially like, you know, just a little tiny, uh, you know, one microfarad, uh, one microfarad, that is micro rubbish, one farad uh, cap, you know, great for energy harvesting, uh, storage in a compact form factor and things like that, uh, mem you know, data backup, memory retention, where you change battery in your product and things like that, just charge up a super cap and it can, can keep your uh, standby, uh, your product going in standby or whatever for pretty much ever. And these look like tantalum caps, but they're not. They're in the same uh, package form factor, you know, your A, B, C, D uh, type form factor packages or whatever the metric equivalent is. But they're actually uh, conductive polymer um, electrolyte capacitors. They're not uh, tantalum capacitors at all. So don't have the uh, benign failure mode under recommended use conditions. So they're not going to, you know, your traditional uh, tantalums, a lot of people avoid them because technically, you know, for impulse applications and things like that, they can catch a light um, and do some nasty uh, stuff. But these are uh, solar ones, completely uh, authorized for automotive uh, application use. So, you know, really ultra reliable stuff. And as I said, the good thing about these is that you get the, you know, the exact part number and you can qualify this part in your engineering sample and then go, yep, I'm going to use those um, in my, uh, you specify that exact part number in your final product. So, you know, you get a little sample kit of those. Nice. And all different values. Beautiful. And they have to be taking the piss here, surely. <laughs> Passive components for the internet of things. I just think this is marketing uh, piss take 101. They're just, uh, you know, just <laughs> low ESR RF capacitors. Neat, right? <laughs> Specific uh, use one specifically qualified for those RF applications. But, you know, you whack internet of things on there and yeah, wank, wank. But yeah, they're just their regular parts. They just, marketing have just got hold of that. <sighs> they're doing a similar sort of thing here for energy harvesting. They're not really energy harvesting components. They're just ones that they're selected from their uh, product category that you know, they they deem to be usable in uh, energy harvesting type applications. The very e eclectic mix of uh, components here. Look, we've got ourselves the uh, super caps there. We've got inductors. We've got, uh, looks like connectors. We've got tantalum caps. We've got uh, board interconnects and stuff like that. Hmm. Once again, their applications group target everything. Here's stuff designed specifically for mobile, you know, applications, mobile phones and things like that. Um, for audio uh, stuff, you know, you want your AC coupling cap for your audio thing, this thing is qualified for that. You want a backlight for your mobile phone? It's it's qualified, right? These particular parts are, well, you know, they their applications group have deemed them suitable for mobile phone applications. Meh. And here's the one we talked about in my previous video on the Model A ceramic capacitor cracking, the Flexi Terminations Flexi Safe uh, cap. So they go into, I mean, we've got the full sample kit for these. These are completely qualified with your flexible terminals. Sorry, even if I had a microscope, I wouldn't be able to, well, I do have one, um, but I wouldn't be able to show you. I'd have to like saw it in half or whatever to show you the uh, encapsulation. They've got some nice uh, photos on that uh, white paper thing. I'll link in down below. Thank you very much, Ryan Finney from Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm sure we've had one from Scottsdale, Arizona before. I'm not sure if it was Ryan, but uh, I know all my viewers in Scottsdale. I've been to Scottsdale, I don't think. California.
Woo! What do we got? We got a note. A M X. A M X. It's like a, a. It's not a tablet. It's got a stand. It's like a little mini TV kind of. No, it's got a. What is this thing? It's got a docking thing at the bottom. This is a touchscreen interface to an AMX control system. It originally retailed for nearly 3,000 US just for the... Uh, the LiPo battery expanded inside and destroyed it. Cool. Quick two minute teardown. What's an AMX control system? Let's crack this uh, special purpose device open. Quite a bit of after the fact uh, shielding on here with the copper tape. Oh, there we go. SSIO wireless card. Hmm. Um, there's the power supply section, quite extensive. Not much else in there. It's going to have the processor probably driving the LCD or whatnot. And, you know, these are your classic uh, you know, commercial application uh, designed gear. They're not designed for high volume. They might have sold, I don't know, a couple of thousand of these things, maybe. What's a AMX control system? I don't know. Maybe they are high high-ish volume, but you know, this sort of stuff, they do put a lot of effort into. They aren't your consumer level uh, volume, that's for sure. Um, this particular one is actually designed to sit on your uh, desk, like, and like sit up like that with the little stand and everything. And then, uh, you know, you can control, executives can control uh, whatever they want, uh, you know, security cameras or intercoms or whatever the thing that you're, oh, that you're controlling. There you go. Oh, it's all coming apart. Oh, yeah, there's a little mic in there. I don't know. You can talk to somebody. They got that in a rubber. I think there is a rubber, little rubber O-ring in there. And, yeah, a little speaker and a mic. So obviously it did some sort of wireless, uh, you know, AV type control thing. But yeah, they, I don't know, they might have manufactured 10,000 of these systems or something maybe. And that's the MVP 5150 for those playing long at home. And there's your main processor and whatnot. Read first. This is an automotive multimeter where the screen has become almost unusable. I tried putting some tape to pressure the screen connector, but nothing improved. Is it one of those uh, zebra uh, strips? I have uh, since replaced it with the EV blog meter. Cool. Um, and included the clamp lead, but retired anything else. Thank you very much, Ryan. Let's have a look at this cheap ass. Is it cheap ass? No, auto, it just says automotive moulding. Okay, what do we got? Anything that has... <laughs> it's got a, a strap on the back of it. Uh, okay, it's got rubber baby buggy bumpers on it. Um, an Innova. IEQUIS.com. I, 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 I don't know who the... Um, offhand, I don't know who the OEM for that one is. Can't say I've heard of an Innova before, the 3440A for those playing along at home. And yeah, it seems to be one sick puppy. Hmm, maybe the bias, LCD bias uh, uh, control has uh, gone on there. Oh, US patent, thank you very much. One of those, probably one of those design patent things because you can't patent a multimeter, but you can patent the design, the look and feel of it. whoop de doo whoop de do indeed check out this bullshit hand-mounted testing meter this is what the strap on the back is for they patented this bullshit can you believe it good on you leon chung cheng from innova electronics unbelievable and look at this you know typical pattern thing they've got to like number the individual look this is a thumb and this is a finger and it mounts on the reverse yeah you know, pattern speak unbelievable Check out this crocker shit. The elastomeric band may be supported by a plural plurality of coupling members disposed on the meter rear surface. <laughs> and it gets better. The present invention is described below in connection with the illustration embodiments. However, it is understood that the illustration and accompanying description are not intended to be the only implementation of the present invention, as will be apparent to those skilled in the art upon review of the invention. <laughs> it's a bloody multimeter stuck to the back of your hand with a, <laughs> an elastic strap. <laughs> Figure 4 illustrates the meter 10 in place against the back or dorsal surface 29 of the user's hand in 
such a position, blah, blah, blah. And down the bottom here, as will also be apparent to those of ordinary skill in the field, the present invention may have application to existing handheld meters, which will do, do not incorporate performed retention members. I mean, like, 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 like ah, why do you bother? with this crap really i mean this is like it's not everything that's wrong with the patent system but then like this trivial sort of crap is like ah uh, they they paid a patent attorney you know the five or ten grand or something to write this it cost them five or ten grand to come up with the uh, you know to actually uh get the application it's probably in multiple countries or whatever and nobody gives a toss and, like it's ah oh, unbelievable i don't know why you'd bother patenting this rubbish i really don't like i okay poor leon's probably very proud of his invention of the elastic strap on the back of the multimeter to put it on your hand but i i, I can't stop laughing it's just bullshit you can just picture them sitting around the design review meeting table when they come up with this idea and it's like, oh, look, the meter straps on the back of the hand and they probably did the mock-up and everything and uh, the powers that be went, oh, that's excellent idea. I thought we, we should patent this. This is going to, like, take the market by storm. This is going to be killer. This is the new killer multimeter app and this meter strapped on the back of your hand. <laughs> they probably thought it was the duck's guts. Wow, that's really quite cheap and old school, isn't it? Look at the jacks. They're not exactly high quality. They're just split and formed contacts in plastic. And the glass fuse, at least they've got it in a... At least they've got it in a socket and it's not soldered on there. But just a little crap M205, not even HRC. Got some pissant PTCs in there and not much else. There's no mobs. So, yeah. Not great. That's a real interesting choice of microcontroller. It's just one of those, you know, little known uh, brands, but probably like a dime a dozen. Oh my god, our miserable looking blob on the bottom. And that's about all she wrote. And there you go for you range switch fanboys. So what's causing that LCD fade? Well, my guess, as I said, would be the uh, bias for the LCD uh, display. And where's that? coming from well it's controlled inside here um external i don't know it's one of the caps uh dodgy is there any uh contrast uh control one of these maybe no they're problem they're more likely your uh, uh cow pots but yeah i like meh i haven't advertised that crazy aussie bloke for a while but uh people still keep uh sending stuff to that which is great Ooh, oh sorry Time sensitive package. Kickstarter, I didn't see it on the bottom. Ties into a Kickstarter, please open November, December. Okay, it's, yeah, okay, hopefully it's started. Ah, uh, well, it's, what is it? November 29th today. If I release this video today, it means that uh, um, all you Yanks out there and uh, those around the world are like, well, it's not the 29th today. That's because I'm in Australia. And we're a year ahead. Open. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Alpha? They've sent an Alpha knife. There you go. It's one of those, uh, maybe they think that this is not adequate. Got my Stanley knife. Uh, my auto retractable braid Stanley knife. Um, Alpha are a top quality brand. That's very nice. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh. So I'll use this to open... First, you can't complain if I'm actually accidentally slicing something inside because you should have should have thought of that. If you're going to send me a knife, thank you, which is awesome, thank you very much. But if you want me to open something and the knife slashes whatever is inside, then that is a packaging fail. Oh, open first. Okay, time sensitive Kickstarter. Whoa, what is that? Whoa, that's completely funky. There's a power switch on the back. Whoa, <laughs> I, I don't know. That's cool. Okay, we'll have to know what it is. Just a big LiPo battery. I like how they've 
separated it with wood. They've got, you know, the laser cut acrylic thing, but they've also got the wood in there, which makes it look, it's called the Pixel. Closed R2 Pixel, full color LED flashlights. One is fully assembled. Ah, the other's in kit form. Okay, cool. So this is a uh, Kickstarter and my 121G, speaking of Kickstarters, don't want to take away from this Kickstarter, which I'll link in down below, um, but the EEV log 121 GW this is not the this is my original 3d printed prototype look at that that's all that's plastic that's plastic that is a my 3d printed look it's painted inside that's the original 3d if you haven't seen it um that's the yeah but probably if you're not a supporter supporters like saw this like a year and a half ago this is like a year and a half old um but that is the original one, the original 3D printed uh, prototype concept meter, and it's changed. There's the real one close to the final one. What date is that? Oh, no, that's the 7th month, 16. Uh, 2016. Um, the Kickstarter for this is approved. It is up. Supporters have seen it, uh, have done a preview, but there's a last-minute firmware type thing and they're not sending me the 50 meters so I don't know whether or not a 50 upfront meters so I'm not sure whether or not I should actually just release the Kickstarter and do it all I gotta do is push a button or whether or not I just wait until they've resolved this final little issue or well, issues always come up in product design and Kickstarters and it's just it's crazy this is the Pixel, not exactly the uh, world's most original name, but it's a uh, Kickstarter at the moment. I'll link it in down below. Full color LED flashlight, no, like as I said, laser cut acrylic here, and uh, like these wood laser cut wood pieces in there make it look kind of funky. I don't mind that at all. And then they've got uh, the slot cutouts for the straps in the back, and there you go. Um, that's, that's just a mode use sticker. Turn it on. There's our uh, lithium uh, ion, lithium polymer uh, battery in there. And is it charged? Yep. Requisite micro USB on the end. And then you just switch it on. And, oh, hold down for two seconds. Hello, McFly. Oh, whoa, there we go. Just blinded myself. Jeez. Anyway, the camera's auto gaining, but ah, uh, oh, man, I can my eyes can now see the individual pixels. So I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's a multicolored flashlight. So I'm not sure what the oh there yeah, that was a pulse mode, wasn't? Not sure what the intended application is. Uh, it, I guess we should read the letter. There you go, I'll let Steve explain. It's designed to be a fun kit that encourages learning to program, building stuff in general, versatile multi-light, uh, perfect for lighting areas, broader beam is desired, the signaling and beacon modes are perfect for emergency, or to grab attention, he's programmed some Morse code signaling, uh, work beautifully, yes, of course, and uh, it uses a micro nucleus uh, bootloader to enable programming via the micro USB port. So that's kind of cool. There you go, tech specs for those playing along at home, and uh, what have we got, 1500 milliamp hour battery, uh, yeah, battery life, etc, etc. Link down below. Let's check out the beam pattern in the lab. Okay, here we go, that's my uh, Mantis light in the background there, for those who are wondering, and ta-da, there it is. So it is a huge beam, wider than the... Uh, camera angle is capable of seeing. I, what I don't like about it is that it doesn't boot, it doesn't boot up. I think you can change it, of course. It's Arduino compatible. Just change the code. Um, it doesn't boot up to white. You know, it boots up to some other weird patterny thing, which I don't like. So, yeah. Um, you can be too fancy with stuff like that. And it's got adjustable dimming. It doesn't seem to have adjustable dimming. I would have liked to have... Uh, seen that but you could program that in that's blue and red and flashy flishy flashy modes whoa whoa hang on whoa jeez and here's all the requisite documentation that comes with the kit and that looks pretty jazzy it's about 55 ux bus bucks for the kit there are i think cheaper options but i'm not sure in the kickstarter i'm not sure what that is he's up to like 1500 bucks of his 13 grand goal so good luck Steve and I'll link it in down below if you want one it's kind of funky I like it program it to do what you want but you shouldn't call a pixel there's other stuff on Kickstarter called pixel now I'm not usually a fan of the matte black 
solder mask, but in this case, it looks pretty jazzy and it's got the gold logo there exposed. Very nice. Um, but the kit doesn't come as a surface mount kit. It's just a, all the LEDs are all uh, nicely, you know, this is a nicely machine assembled. Looks like we've got our uh, in-circuit programming interface there, but as I said, it's programmable via the USB. So that looks quite a jazzy. The Pixel. Ooh, in gold. Oh, I just realized why it's called the Pixel, because it uses these little Neo Pixel things, does it? It must. It must. I'm not really into those sort of things, but yeah, those little addressable uh, LEDs, they've got them on the same, well, data in, data out. These cascade them like that, feed the data through, and bypass cap on each one. It's a bit... Is that overkill? Meh. I don't know. Thank you very much, M. Everett from New Zealand. Where in New Zealand? Uh, Manaroa. Manaroa? Manaroa. Have I been through there? Not sure. Um, anyway, drove around New Zealand once. Thank you very much. Hi to all my New Zealand viewers. I'll spare the sheep uh, jokes, but I wonder if this one sucks. Sucks. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure it doesn't. I'm sure it doesn't. So, uh, Rayboplus.co.new Zealand. It's a doodad. We don't know what the doodad is. Let's check it out. Oh, Matt doesn't actually do the, uh, this is not his product. It's a two minute teardown. It's a one-time access, generates a one-time access code for logging into Rabobank, uh, which is a New Zealand bank, their online service. Um, so yeah, awesome. Two minute teardown. I wonder if it uses like a secure crypto uh, micro. There it is, little, uh, you know, it just generates a one-time uh, pad. Is, it, is, it, is that the tech, that's the technical thing, isn't it? A one-time pad password or whatever? Um, cool, let's check it out. The Rabo Plus key code generator. I'm afraid that this is US patents, meh, whatever. I'm afraid that this thing is just going to be a blob, a black blob on the uh, PCB and that it'll be all she wrote, really. Um, why wouldn't it be? I almost certainly is. Um, by the way, I'm waiting for the new Trezor to come out. Um, I've done a hardware teardown of the... Oh, what is that? Oh, I've got to pry that open. Hang on. There we go. That's better. Yeah, I'm waiting for that to come out. Yeah, black blob. There it is. Unfortunately, that's all she wrote. So, yeah, it's probably doing some one-time uh, pad thing. Anyway, waiting for the new uh, Trezor to come out. I'll do a uh, teardown of that when it becomes available like after Christmas or something like that. And I'm thinking about designing my own Trezor as well. I'm waiting for the hardware, uh, the uh, the open source hardware files to become available. They're not up yet. Yeah, so what do you do? You enter your pin number and then what? Fail two. Fail uh, three fails. Does it lock you out? I don't know. I, d I don't know the process for doing this, but... How many times is it going to let us fail? Lock! We locked it! Beauty. Wonder how long it locks. It probably locks you out for like 10 minutes or something like that. But you could just open it, remove the battery. Let me try that and see if it gets rid of the lock. So as it turns out, that battery is soldered in there. So what we'll do is we'll just short it out, shall we? Is that... There you go. Did that do it? No. Didn't do the business. Come on. Nope. I think I actually killed that little switching tranny or diode there. I think I killed it. Um, I was just playing around with other shorting methods because, yeah, sure enough, um, I was shorting out the right thing there, but it didn't seem to do anything. So maybe it's got a bit of uh, storage um, on there. But, well, especially if that's a diode um, and I didn't measure it and now it's dead. No, it's actually okay. I'm getting like 2.8 volts across here, and it does that does seem to be a diode. I'm getting a drop across that, and uh, I, I don't know. Anyway, I've killed it. What's with these spirals here? What's the go? Um, on the is this some sort of tamper protection kind of thing? Look, we've got ourselves a spark gap in there. That's interesting. Like this, these are coming from the screws, so they're obviously pre preventing any ESD from the screws. Um, so that's it's fascinating. But why are they then going from the screw through to there? Is that it? it can't be tamper protection because there's nothing. 
nothing on the back of these things. Like, you know, like the screws don't connect to anything. This is not like conductive plastic um, or anything like that. So I don't know what the don't know what the deal is there. They've labelled them left and right. What? So what seems to be going on here is that uh, this screw pad going down through that via there, it's actually going off. So it's actually connected. If you jump up here, it's connected through to a 3.3K resistor there. What the? Like, uh, through to there, which is the, like the other side of the spark gap. Like, what are they trying to do? do and that bugger spark gap again and that buggers off up to here and goes around to here what what is off hand i can't think what that is apart from some sort of attempt at tamper protection if you take the screws out but as i said there's no conductive path between you know this screw and that screw it it, it doesn't know that you're actually uh, doing anything, that, that you've actually taken that screw out or not. So I don't, I don't understand that. Is this thing cleverer than, uh, is it in the patent? Should we look up the patent? Anyone want to look up that? For those playing along at home? There you go. I'll do that in the editing and see what's what. Thank you very much, person unknown from Nippon, presumably Japan, in a nice old school uh, uh, tied thing. You know, you don't get too many of these these days. I like those. It's rather elegant, you know. None of this knife rubbish. So thank you very much, Flori Florian. Florian, unfortunately, my trusty gaming device broke down. Gaming? Still hope and enjoy its internals. Another two minute teardown. Gaming device. Oh, what is this? Wow. What is that? Bueller? Bueller? I've never seen that before. I don't know what that symbol is offhand. All the gamers out there are probably screaming, oh yeah, I know what that is. It's a Japanese doodad Pandora Ultra Portability Pandora. And it's German. Um, Linux Rebirth Edition. Well, one gigahertz it did. Whoa. Okay. I had no idea such a guy. I'm not in the gaming, you know, like the, like the young kiddies are. Um, yeah. Cool. Let's tear it down. Here you have the Pandora. Check it out. I, I Maybe I was familiar with this back in the day. It's a uh, open source gaming console uh, designed to uh, take advantage of open source Linux uh, game development or something like that. Back in 2010, it was developed. I like the little uh, uh, joysticky pads here and the old style, uh, you know, um, uh, Game Boy. What is it? The, you know, the Game & Watch type uh, interface and a QWERTY keyboard and everything else and a little LCD screen. Um, but I don't know how popular this thing was. If anyone knows, let us know. But uh, it's the Open Pandora, um, made, in, made in Bavaria, Germany. Hi to all my Bavarian viewers. That's fair. <laughs> like, this, they put a lot of effort into this thing, sort of thing. I wonder what uh, actually happened to it. Hmm, ultra portability without sacrificing capability. Neat. And we're in like Flynn. There we go. We've got our dual um, SD cards here and it's got some ARM Cortex-y uh, type processor and, well, it's, you know, it's an ARM processor Linux uh, machine and what else can you say about it? Um, it's got the, where are the buttons up there? And these are the buttons up the top for the uh, triggers, you know, the little, you've got triggers on the uh, top of the case. There we go. You can kill. And I do like how it's all uh, single board construction. There we go. There's the... Whoa, that's just... Whoa. Whoa, I could fondle those all day. Oh, yeah. Um, I like how it's all uh, single board uh, construction there. Um, have they got... No, they don't have that on a double-sided. That's... Is that a double-sided? So four... No, it's got to be full layer with the BGAs and uh, whatnot. But, um, yeah, I like how it's all... Uh, the battery contacts are directly on the board. Everything's, every, like, you know, they've minimised cost there by having everything on the one board. They've actually got, oh, only got, 
We've got one like tranny on the bottom. Oh, a few passives around here and whatnot. Not sure what's going on. Oh, okay, they're all the bypass. I was going to say they don't have any bypass stuff, but that's all uh, bypass to the back of the BGA. But I guess if you're doing reflow, oh, no, these would be hand soldered. These things wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be reflow. Oh, oh. It's, I can't express how nice that feel is of those spring in back. Ooh. Um, yeah, they've done well to get that all on single board like that to minimise the uh, cost. Then we've just got the membrane and um, the LCD display, uh, whether or not the dry, the driver might be over. Or... No, the driver's coming from, coming from here by the looks of it. Uh, that would, yeah, that would be going up, yeah, that would be going up a ribbon cable, right up its clacker. Um, to the, there'd, of course, be some LCD drivery stuff over there, but, uh, that's interesting look at a, is it still going? Anyone? Bueller? The Pandora. Neat. They put a lot of work into that. If it did fail, it's a bit of a shame. Thank you very much, John Wiltrout, uh, from... Chippewa Falls in Wisconsin, is it? Um, fantastic. Hi to all my viewers in... Or WI. Is WI Wisconsin? I think so. Anyway. I do like the sound of what's in here. Oh, excellent. Dear Mr. Jones, I'm an old electronics guy and primarily active on the um, Element 14 electronics website. Are people still using that? Sorry, I... <laughs> Sure, it's, if that's your forum of choice, that's great. But I highly recommend the EV blog forum, the forum of choice, evblog.com slash forum, um, <laughs> to uh, some of my engineer friends on Element 14 told me that I should send a set to you. Um, there, oh, well, extolling the virtues of these probe tips. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, that's, this looks sex on a stick. Let's check it out. So it looks like John got a bit uh, peeved off with uh, his probes slipping, so he developed these non-slipped, non-slip probes. Hmm, I get the macro lens out and check these out. Wow, they're not, no, they, no they're not pogo-y, but wow, interchangeable tips. Do they screw in and out? I don't know what the deal is there. Do you pull them out? Oh, how do you change them? The different widths. Wow. From 0.6 to 1.2 millimeters. Um, he prefers the 0.8. Is the duck's guts non-slip meter probe background? I'll uh, just let you have a read of this. Uh, just pause, and there's the background. Owner of a technician for a business sold and service equipment in dental clinics and uh, stuff like that uh, for servicing sterilizer circuit boards and yeah. I mean, probe slippage can be a pain in the ass. Um, that's your, that's your typical uh, crown. Uh, point, I believe they call it, which you'd get on the uh, pogo pins, uh, test pins for test jigs and things like that. I've used countless ones of those over the years. And yes, they don't slip because they've got the little serrated uh, points on the end. So when you push them down, especially useful on test jigs, they don't skid off the pad and things like that. They dig in. So there you go. That's just the background uh, behind this. And of course, they just slide on to your multimeter probe like that. And you've got a really, uh, there's a bit of, bit of wiggle, 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 yeah, in there happening. Um, but of course you can get right down and they should be fairly non-slippy. So as opposed to the sharp points on multimeter probe, standard flute probe, there you go. Red on black, I know, I know. Um, but, um, yeah, I guess that'd be my only criticism. Maybe they're a bit too long, but that's maybe the point, um, is that they're more versatile, you can get down into hard to reach areas. But if you want to do something up close, having it that far away from your fingers might be a bit, you know, you might have to hold it like that or something like that, which isn't as convenient. But anyway, that's neat. And there's the end of that. Hopefully you can see that. It looks like there's four, four points on there. So it's not exactly, yeah, look at that. It looks a bit flattish. To me, there you go. Oh no, 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 there you go. You can see that. Anyway, carbide point on the thing. Neat, tungsten carbide. And I think he said that's six little fluted points on there, is it? Anyway, that's pretty funky. I like that. Made in Canada, hi to all my Canadian viewers. These are the carbide 
bird tips available in the different form factors. That's more like it. That's what I want to see. Check out that puppy. That looks dangerous. Oh, yeah. Wield that probe. Wow. It's going to stick to anything. You're going to get through all the oxide coating on the pads as well. Wow. Terrific stuff. I like these. Um, has he got a website where he's selling them? Does he even sell them? I don't know. He, he doesn't even doesn't even mention it. What? Come on, John. And apparently you can... Oh, yeah, there you go. You can replace them. So, beauty. Just slip it in like that. Bob's your uncle. So, yep, I'm not sure what the deal is there, but um, John has not included any place where you can buy these from. He's developed them and sent them in, and they're awesome. I'm sure there's a lot of people who want to buy them. John, come on. Ah, I just read the letter properly, and yeah, these are prototypes, so it looks like they're not actually uh, for sale yet, and John wants to uh, wants my feedback on it, and um, as I said, like, short would maybe be a bit more useful. Um, I don't know why they have to be that uh, long. I would have, uh, yeah, preferred, because there's not much in the way, I mean, there's good enough friction on those, so, like, it only goes in that far, so you're wasting all that extra length in there like that. So that would be my only suggestion. I don't mind these at all. People would buy these. These are really jazzy. You should do like a crowdfunder and uh, get these made. And then the Chinese will copy them and next day. I'm not sure if there's anything equivalent out there. Uh, Fluke do. I've got them here. Someone sent them into the mailbag. Some needlepoint uh, electronic, you know, spring-loaded uh, uh, probes, um, and that'd be really nice. In fact, could these be, um, could you actually get them, make them compatible with standard pogo pins? Uh, the ones with the, you know, the spring contacts in there, because you can buy those readily from, uh, you know, DigiKey, or in this case, Element 14. Then they come in like standard widths um, for the, you know, the width of here, because you've got to design uh, your, your holes in your test jig for your bed of nails pogo pin so maybe some people might prefer a retractable you know a spring pointed one that actually uh well i'm damaging my mat there um that actually uh springs down and makes contact like that but some people may not so but that maybe if you design them around that is that a standard width for those industry standard pogo pins um where did you get these from are these like uh, uh off the shelf things I, I'm not sure but anyway yeah there's some recommendations I would crowdfund that that's pretty neat everyone should have a set of uh, these for you know just really micro probing and stuff like that so it doesn't slip off it'd be nice for like SO packages because these crown points will go very nicely into uh, uh, solder pads for you know not like some relatively soft uh, solder so when you're probing pins they don't slide off and short out to the pin next to it um so these would be really quite nice for that sort of you know probing dense smd chips and things like that so i i think there's a lot of uh, merit in this idea i'd certainly buy a pair so let's, let's measure the resistance of these things yes i have nulled out my test leads so there you go 0.05 ish Bobby Dazzler. Thank you very much, Pranav Vernica, if I've got that right, um, from, and I had to look this one up, uh, Bengaluru. Like, as in that was the country or something? No. <laughs> but no, I looked it up. It's Bangalore in India. Um, that's another word for uh, Bangalore. So there you go. Go figure. Thank you very much. Um, I know exactly what's in here. And it won't take... Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, look at that. Beautiful, it's got love hearts. Thank you. Oh, from the Bolt. Right, Bolt IO. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yes, they are ba yeah, they're based there, aren't they? So yes, thank you very much, Bolt IO. Didn't I didn't their product fail? <laughs> they they sent it into the mailbag, I'm sure they did. And didn't it like it didn't work? It was supposed to they are they the ones who challenged me to like get it working in like five minutes? And after like half an hour I still couldn't get it working properly. <laughs> Internet of things, you know. Um anyway, they've said a thank you. For any promotions, good promotion. You know, some people like 
things fail. You know, engineers who watch this understand that sort of thing. Geez, they've got custom packaging for this thing. They must be sending out a lot of them. It's a Bolt IO mug. The Internet of Things platform, apparently. Um, thank you very much. Even though I don't drink coffee, um, or tea for that matter, um, I use coffee mugs to put stuff in around the lab here. Awesome. Thanks. So thanks to everyone who sent something into today's mailbag. There's not much here to visually look at, is there? Oh, anyway. Give the video a thumbs up if you like my all bag. Catch you next time. Hello.